doing all fun. So my name is Lena. Uh, I'm from my uh, working for Foodspring. I also brought some uh, products in case you don't know us. So in the end, if you have some questions, you're gonna get a free uh, like protein shake, which is awesome. <laughs> they actually like uh, almost sold out, so you're really lucky today. <laughs> so uh, um, my name is Lena. I'm very uh, thankful I can be here today. Basically, uh, I'm gonna start about what we do at Foodspring at the at CRM level, like how we're trying to keep our customers happy, how we try to keep them like our customers and like uh, basically what we have as like actions. So, so uh, I'm gonna start with like, what is your first thought about fitness food? This is usually like a uh, like big topic because when you think of th fitness food, usually people think of this. So people think of, <laughs> my favorite is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the corner. <laughs> so people usually think of like big boxes of protein, of pills, of like big muscular guys. And uh, we were like thinking, really? Is that really what fitness food is about? And we think uh, fitness food is something different. We think fitness food for the majority should be something completely different and looks like something like this. So basically like you see people in the office, you see people like swimming, you see people at the beach and this is what fitness food should target at. So everybody of us, because we kind of believe that like fitness food just like makes you stronger, like at the sports, it makes you more concentrated because like you're taking care of your body and uh, what you do is like, it's good for you basically. Like you stop eating like fast food, you stop eating like bad products and you come out as a, like a better, healthier person in the end. So this is like what we look like. This is like a completely really different concept. Like when you see like, in the before you see like the big bundles of protein, like the big black boxes. And what we do is like, we have like really bright colors. We have like clear design, like white <laughs> labels. And we say like, um, we have everything from like protein to coconut oil. So this is a little bit what we do. Um, who we are? So we were founded in 2013. We actually like in this street. <laughs> so we were like five people. Uh, I was uh, the first intern actually. <laughs> so I really like know how it was from the beginning. And so it started very really slowly. But 2015, we had the first uh, TV campaign. We had the first uh, development of our own product. We started with like our first organic protein, which is, was like revolutionizing kind of the market. It was also our TV campaign I bought. 2016, we relaunched ECTE, so we used to be called ECTE. I don't know if somebody heard of that <laughs> before. So we got relaunched to Foodspring because we said we want to be more international. We want to like conquer like Europe. We want to conquer the world a little bit. And we want to like um, broaden our portfolio about like superfoods or like snacks, all these like healthy things. And uh, this year, we actually online in like 12 countries, which is like mostly Euro like European Union and China and Hong Kong which is like very exciting for us. So you can see our product range a little bit, it's like functional foods, which is basically what I said before, like protein, like uh, creatine, like BCAAs, like all these like amino acids that you need to be like fully like supportive. We also have like smart cooking, which we say like, if you use coconut oil, it's better for you than like normal oil. Like you use like superfood berries instead of like jam or something like direction. So it's like really like, better for your cooking. And you have healthy snacks, which will be like healthy porridge in the morning, or like a protein bar in between instead of a chocolate bar. So this is basically what we do. So our approach is like, this is basically our approach, is like brand over e-commerce. So we say like you have need to have a really strong brand these days to be like successful in e-commerce. Um, we talk directly to our customers. So also I'm gonna talk about what we do in CRM. So it's like a really customer, like direct approach. We <laughs> have like a data monkey attitude, how we say. We try to collect as much data as possible. We try to like use it as much as, as, uh, as much as possible. So this one, and uh, we say innovation and quality is like our base. So we say we're not going for cheap products. We're not going for cheap ingredients. We're going for the best ones we can find. And also like the only ones using them. So if we actually like have a USP like compared to all the other brands. So just our approach. And now my topic, what I do is like, how do we do that at CRM? Which I think is very exciting. And um, the definition of CRM is treated <laughs> like a strategy for managing a company's interactions with customers by using technology to organize, automate, and synchronize business processes. So this is the overall definition of CRM, what we do. What I think is very important that CRM also applies to like potential customers. So it's mean like we are trying to talk to the customers in the first way, like, to keep them longer. So we're starting with like telling the truth. We're starting them like saying what's really gonna happen. Like this is like the wonder product. Like we also have like a huge diet section kind of. So if you say you're gonna lose five kilos in one week, 
they're never gonna come back. So we say like you have to like talk honestly to your customers and like like the way they understand you and this is also like part of the CRM what we're doing. So when I start with like this life cycle marketing, I don't know if everybody knows that. I think most people heard it already, which is basically like you have the different like areas of like customer stages. So life cycle marketing means you target your customers based on your status and their interests like personalized mailing campaigns. And we believe a good CRM has to be as personalized as possible and as like uh, segmented as possible because like the more personalized you have your conversation, the more directly the customer is going to feel like you speak to him and he's going to like trust you because you actually have what he wants. So we say like it starts with like uh, the customer engagement starts from the beginning, it starts with the awareness, like he's going to recognize your brand, he's going to see you're like on the market, he develops an interest, he has like the desire, if you do good marketing, <laughs> you know, he has the desire to buy your product, um, he's going to take action which basically me means he, like he's going to buy and then in the end the interest goes down. And But if you start doing like good CRM and like good loyalty marketing with in the end, you increase the loyalty in the end, you make him even your advocate, so your ambassador. So in the end, what we were trying to do with our customers is like to make them ambassadors for our brand. So that we say like, they're gonna go to their friends and say like, oh, I love this product, this is like amazing, it's like good quality, it's gonna help me. And this is like, I think the idea of all CRM measurements that we're taking. I think I want to like quickly talk about like the difference between like CRM versus email versus email marketing. I think that's always very confusing. Um, so CRM in the end is like all customer relationship management, and this is especially important for software where you have like huge CRM software, so, like for example like Salesforce, like Oracle, which is like especially important for all like B two B clients because then you have the possibility to have all the interaction with the customer in one place. Um, we do not have a CRM tool. What we do is basically we do loads of email marketing and connect that together with our customer service tool, which where we use like Zendesk. So in the end, we have like an email marketing tool which like automates all your email campaigns. I don't know if you guys all heard of that. So basically, like you put in like your customers, you have like segments, you have like recipe lists, and you say this is your email marketing automation. So we want to get through to that person, and uh, we're not using a CRM system yet because uh, we think you're still too small and we're like B2C in the end, we're like all online, so we don't have that many like different interactions to track with the customer. And so far, we're really happy with just our email marketing tool. So, yeah. The advantage of email marketing, uh, first of all, is really, it's really cheap. <laughs> we just think it's for like startups, like very important. Also, what I, what I think is very important is like email marketing is actually the most personal form of marketing, of online marketing. Like you basically like, when somebody subscribes to your email list, they want to hear from you, which I love because like if you have a Facebook ad, people don't necessarily want to see them. But you've, if they sign up for your email list, they want to hear from you. So it's like, for me, like always like kind of like a compliment to people like signing up for a product. They're not unsubscribing, they like love the email. So I'm just thinking like, this is like a real connection that we're building. And I think that's very important to like differentiate because there's loads of like email which is like called spam which is not what you're doing. Like basically, when you're sending newsletters, this is like a direct form, it's like a direct personal interaction with the customer. And uh, yeah, so this is basically why I love emails and why I love newsletters, because I think it's like, it's like the best form to connect. And uh, so I just wanna share about like what we lear learned, and like I think we're doing email marketing now for like around two years. So I wanna like share what we learned in doing two years of email marketing and how you can make your CRM in the end like better and I think even if people are doing like B2B here or like <laughs> other sorts, I think there is something in here for everybody because it's like um, general learnings we had. So basically, there are like three steps to build a strong relationship with the customers. So you start with uh, getting to know each other and I think this is like kind of like date stage. So like it's basically you going on a date before you want to go kind of further, <laughs> you want to know what the person is about. Like you want to know like what the person likes and the person wants to know like what you're about, like what's great about you. So the first point in our automation is always like get to know the customer. And then the second step is like make it feel like a one-to-one -one conversation. Like make it feel you're actually talking to the person like personally. Like if I was sitting on a date with you, I want you to feel like the email is like meant for you, for example. Like this is like what we really try to do with every single email we send. Next step is like, 
build your relationship, like keep it running, like keep it smooth and like see if there's a problem, like see what's the, what the customer wants or what's going to change. So this is like really like the hard work, I think, in the end, because you convince him once, so you want to keep him. So this is for your relationship. In the end, what we saw is like grow your brand as a result. For us, like even marketing or like altogether CRM is like very successful. Like in the beginning, it's a lot of work to set it up, but I think it's completely worth it because <laughs> it really helped us grow a lot. Basically, so I'm gonna start with like uh, our like I think it's like 16 learnings, but it goes pretty quick, so don't be scared. <laughs> so um, it's important to discover the motivation as early as possible. And if you can see him, his motivation is like a donut. <laughs> so um, we want to see like what, why is our customer coming to us? Like why is the person coming to our website? Like how did we get him there? And it's like basically like the marketing we do, and there's an idea behind. Him. There's like a goal. So what we use, and I think other companies use it as well, is like a body check. So you have like the possibility for the customer to enter like all their data. So basically saying like, what's your goal? And we have like four categories. So we have like weight loss, we have muscle building, we have like healthy eating, and I think we have endurance, like running. And the idea is that we ask him what he wants, and that we ask him how he's like, how he's eating, if he's sleeping enough, and what he could possibly need. Because we also know like the protein, like the whole fitness food area is like, I think it's a bit of a mystery to loads of people because it's like quite new. I think most people don't drink protein shakes every day. And so I think it's like for our customers, like they know they have a need, they want to build muscles, they want to lose weight, but they don't know how. So we have a body check. So in the end, every customer gets like a personal product recommendation. So we say like for you, like it would be like the organic protein or it would be like amino acids or it would be like the shape caps because we want to lose weight. And what we do in the end is we say, we're gonna send it to you by email if you want to. So this is basically our biggest lead generation tool. And what I really like about this is that it's like in the end, you get your data, but you give something back for it. Usually you just have those like bounce layers, you have like in the future like newsletter subscription, but what we do here is like we give something back for their data. And also you get loads of data. So we kind of know like what people want when they come to our website. So this is our first, first learning. The second one would be, start collecting that data and build your first segments. What I said before is like, I want to feel like, make everybody feel like it's a personal conversation. So we say like, uh, we're going to talk about like weight loss if somebody wants to lose weight. So we're going to lose about, like talk about muscle building if somebody wants to talk about muscle building. So store all the data you get. And this looks something like this in our case. So you basically store everything, everything you do on the website, everything you really click. Because it's like, it's so valuable. Like you're going to need it at one point and it's so insightful as well. Um, don't rush it, sorry, third learning, start with content. It's like back to the date analogy I had before, like start telling why you're like the one, like don't start selling stuff, don't be like, oh please like buy it right now, but say like why you're different. So this is what we do, this is like our first welcome series when you sign up basically. We say like, this is all in German, so we can turn straight in the end, but you say like we have the best organic, uh, ingredients, you have like a nice little gif like showing what our USPs are. So you say like, empathize what you're doing differently. Tell, like, say why you're better than your competition, for example. I think it's very important because like most people actually just go for the sale. If you sign up for like some newsletters, you can just like basically go to like the top sellers or something. And we also have the voucher in the end, but we also start with the content. And, the, and it really works. Like, so this is like the click analytics, like saying like where people actually click. And three times as many people click on the content on the voucher, which I think is like the best proof that content over conversion in the beginning. I think it was for us like a really, really big learning. And then we say slowly start going for the sale. And this is where your data kicks in. Like basically like we have the data from the body check that we collected or the data you're gonna collect at some point. And then start using that data to build segments like start personalizing every mailing. It's also when you do B2P, B2B, for example, you can also say like, you know that person wants to get that out of your business. So you can write him like it's straight, like directed email basically in the end, which I think is super important. So we do that based on gender and based on goal. And we only have relevant offers as the first selling proposition. So we don't have like randomized top sellers. Like we don't have muscle building if somebody wants to lose weight, we only have like, the right content. And it really works, and I love that as well, because like our click rates and open rates, like they would raise up 114% and 304%. So I really think this is like the strongest indicator that like personalization takes time, but it's worth it in the end. 
And now you're coming to the second step. So we make it feel like a one-to-one -one conversation. So what we do is like, and this is like our most, I think, important email that we have at all. And I think everybody can do that as well. It's like, give everything a personal touch. So we, uh, it's, it's automated. So it does go through every single day. But <laughs> it's like, Stefan is our head of customer service. Like he writes you an email. He's like, I'm here to help you to reach your goals. And this is how the email looks like. And um, basically, this is all the things that are like personalized. This is like, Stefan from Foodspring is like the, the email like header basically like says so like I'm I'm Stefan I'm like the head of customer service I'm here to help you personally they's like write me an email and then we also have the signature which I think is kind of funny but it did perform better like I never see anybody put in the signature in the email but for some reason this performs better than without the signature which I think is interesting but I love this email because it just like shows that you can like automate a personal conversation. So the idea was that like, we sent this out to non-buyers, so people who subscribed but didn't buy it. We said like they have a need. They don't understand our products. They have, like, they have a goal, but they don't know what to do. So we said like we answer questions to our product. And the responses, what I said before, go directly to Zendesk. So we use Zendesk for all our customer service inquiries. And it goes directly there. So it actually goes to Stefan. And Stefan, he really exists. <laughs> people ask, always ask me that, but he really exists. So he actually answers or like his team members answers. And uh, this is amazing. And this is emails we get back every th single day. And uh, so it's like, thank you so much for your email. I'm so happy we get to meet each other. And I love this. And this is basically how I look like when I read those answers. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's like amazing. And you get like so many insights as well. Like People say, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I don't understand. And we actually, we're changing our packaging, for example, sometimes when we see people don't understand how to use a certain product. And uh, yeah, I just, I just love that personal contact that you get with people. Also, we have like a second email with Stefan. It's just like, stay in touch. So it's like, this is after sales. So people actually bought something. And after you think around, right at the moment, it's like 10 days, you say like, did you get your order? Do you have questions to your order? Can I help you with something, it's Stefan? And it was like, our idea was like, just to be there just in case there are questions. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> it actually really works, but what happened was like um, the increased customer satisfaction, and it's one of our best upsell and cross-sell emails ever, <laughs> which is funny because people just bought like ten days ago, and I don't know really what to do in customer service, but for some reason people just buy again. They buy like a second product, like helping them to get their goal faster and everything. So I really think this is like amazing as well. And then we also tested which is also like very important. It's like we tested like a female version ver version <laughs> for like everybody wants to lose weight. We're sending like the guys, like we send Stefan to basically to the guys. We send Mia, like also like one of our employees to the woman who wants to lose weight. And the revenue per like opener, like who opened the email is basically double as high as before. And I think this just starts like the smallest like changes you can do. I mean, this took us like five minutes max. It's gonna like help you so much to grow your business, and I love that it's like personal thing that people like actually like react to it. They're like, "Wow, this is a woman. I can talk to her more openly or something." So this is like very interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> what we also do is like um, we're gonna be trying to be proactive about shortcomings. So we're like a startup basically. So we're on the market for like uh, four years around. Uh, we still have our problems. So for example, January we started our TV campaign now. And our orders, like, they just exploded. So we basically, like, really doubled our orders. And our, like, logistics warehouse could not follow up. They were, like, completely overwhelmed. So we had, like, I think, like, a backlog of around, like, 10,000 orders. And uh, <laughs> which <laughs> is really horrible when you say, like, your order is going to be there in two days. So uh, what we do, we send an email. <laughs> we say, like, hi, Lena. Like, I'm so sorry. In the name of Foodspring, I want to apologize. Um, this is what happened, this is what we did wrong, um, but we're going to change it. And here's a voucher, and we're really sorry. And also from Stefan, because we've, everybody knows Stefan, right? So everybody got an email from Stefan before. So uh, we sent that email. And what happened was that people write back, and they're like, this is so nice that you're writing me, this is no problem. Like People actually said all the time, like, it's OK, it doesn't matter. It's like it's nice that you're like proactive. It's nice that you're like writing me. This never happened to me before. So again, this is like a really small change. 
like a really small email to set up, but it helped us so much to like keep those people happy. And those people waited like 10 days for your order, like which is insane these days. Like I mean, Amazon ships in like a day, and we do 10. <laughs> so, but um, we fixed it. Um, people actually buying again. People are really using that voucher. I mean, it's a high voucher, it's 10 euros, but people come back. So I really, really think it works. This next one, um, which comes into that is like evaluate your relationship. So what we do for not that long actually, I think like one or two months is like we ask for the net promoter score. I think everybody knows the net promoter score. Yeah, so it's basically like you ask the question like how high is the chance that you would recommend us to a friend or to a family member or to like a colleague? And um, then you have like zero to 10, so 10 would be like very high, zero would be like very small. And I put the two versions here because I think it's very important that you have like always like an email marketing, you have like the mobile version and the desktop version. So it's like optimized wherever you click. Otherwise, these ones I think would be very small in a like phone. So this is what we do. And this is what we do for a while, like just to see like what people think of us, like how happy they really are to have like an objective measurement. We also do that for, we do that for the whole order, but we also do that for products, which is even more interesting because we have products with like a score of 50, maybe products with a score of minus 20, where you can just see like <laughs> something went wrong there, I think. Um, and ask them what they like about you. Because so we, we change the questions basically. We ask like, depending on what they click, we say like, if you click a 10, we say, what do you like about us? And for us, um, we get loads of comments what they, what they like. We get, I think, five times as many comments of what they like about us, what, we do, what they don't. So what we learned is like they like the quality. So we're trying to push quality more. We're trying to push it more in all the marketing channels because we know if you convince those people about our product, about that USP, basically, we can also convince other people. So I think it's also important to ask what they like, not only what they don't like. Also, people, all the things that they don't like, we're also trying to change it. But I think it's almost as valuable as like the positive comments because in the end, you need to work on both. You need to make your your strong side stronger and your weaknesses kind of. <laughs> so in the end, so I think that's very important. And last step is like build your relationship. So we think you should make your customers feel very, very special. Which is like something like this. Um, what we do, we send uh, like an artist like our packaging usually. Like so, when you order like a package from Foodspring, you get like kind of like this when you order those products. And we have um, one booklet in there which has like your name on it. So I think other companies are also doing that. I think they like write their name even like with hand, but this is like the greatest feedback we get. It's like, wow, there was like a booklet with my name printed on it. And we really do that for every order. So basically like when you order, like you print your booklet. So we also change the topics in the booklets. So we're saying like, you order like whey proteins, so you can get more like muscle guides or like you order like the shape shake, you're gonna get like a weight loss guide. So that's, that's the big idea. And it's the greatest feedback because people feel like personally like talk to basically again, which is like amazing. Like, it really works so well for us. Um, another point we have is like remind them of benefits you already have. So um, what I get a lot is like you order somewhere like anywhere online for the first time and you get like a 10% voucher. I think most people know that and uh, I always forget about them. And I do loads of online shopping because I mean like a work e-commerce store. And uh, what we do is that we have the same for new customers, we get 10%. So we send an email like after around, I think 42 days at the moment, where we say, you still have a voucher. <laughs> and we sent the same email before without the voucher and our conversion rate now went up by 100% because we just remind them of benefits they already have. So the idea is like, that usually customers have loads of benefits and they just forget about them. Or like you send them a voucher and they just put them somewhere and don't see them anymore. So just remind them. And I think everybody's like so busy these days that the more you remind them, like if it doesn't get too spammy, like it's still gonna like push your like awareness of the customer of you and feel like, oh nice, I still have a voucher, so now I'm gonna order again, for example. I think uh, this is very important here in general, like challenge your beliefs and crunch your data. So if I talk about the shape shake, for example, we were thinking, are like all the people gonna buy it? This is gonna be women. It's all gonna be like girls. But what happened actually is like, we have like almost 30% of men buying our shape shake. And um, we didn't believe it. <laughs> also like France, 
way lower. I think French people are just like maybe skinnier <laughs> generally. But um, uh, yeah, so we were just like pushing the shape check to women all the time. We had like all over like advertising was like pictures of like women doing yoga, or women like, I don't know, in the forest doing yoga, like basically this one. And then we started pushing the shape check also to men. We had such a like, better response because then you finally see what people like really buy your product for, like who really buys your product. And I think this happens to everybody that you have this idea of like the, what the product is for, like what the target group looks like. When you look at the data, it's actually completely different. And uh, also like we have like, for example, I think the beef jerky. And almost every order is like beef jerky for men. So it's just like crunch your data, see what people do, see like who buys what and like when they buy it. And I think there's like loads of potential always to discover in the end. Define when your customers are becoming inactive. So we're back at the whole like customer retention part. Um, you should know when your customer would need you again. So for example, our product is like 25, I think, portions per package. So we, sh we should know like after two months, you should really like need us again. And uh, so we want to like see when the time as a with customer engagement. So you kind of want to see at what time exactly the customer engagement goes down. And uh, the experience we had is we did loads of testing. We tried to like send emails, we tried to like send emails in different times. And um, also like try to include the variables like the basket size, like the higher the basket size, the like less often they buy again, obviously. But I think this is really like important to like consider all these different points because um, for us it was like 42 days for everybody. And now it really depends on like on the customer. And I think when you're too late or you like too late to reactivate a customer, it's like it's like the chance is like much, much slower. Like it goes for us, I think every like month be like too late, it goes down by fifty percent. So you really like need to define the time when the person becomes inactive and really like target that spot basically. And then what we do is like <laughs> we try to win them back. I mean, um, I think just our product is, I think it's kind of hard because like I think everybody knows that in the beginning, like you have the, you have your big uh, idea, like the 1st of January, you want to lose weight and then lose motivation. So for us, it's like all about like um, motivational feedback and like, so like you can do it and like get to your goal now. So this is what we do. So uh, yeah, so we're trying to like get to the right spot, which would be there and make those customers to loyal customers again, basically. And this is the story you just like talked about quickly, was like, we try to motivate them. We say like, you wanna be fitter again. You wanna like work out more. What we do afterwards, we ask for feedback. It's like, why don't you buy again? And this is a long time. We sent this email after I think like four or five months at the moment, depending on like also the basket size and like what they bought in the end. But it's like four or five months and they haven't bought again. So we ask like, why didn't you buy again? And the interesting thing is, people answer this like survey and 21% actually buy something. Which I think is just also there's a voucher in the email, so I think it's very interesting, but in the end, I think it's all about like talking to them, like making them feel like they're hurt. What we also do is like we're sending actually like to that survey, we're sending like feedback emails, we're saying like, wow, you criticized this on us, but we changed it. And this is like the best feedback you can get from customers, you're like, wow, you actually listened to me. Like for example, we changed like the packaging size because it was like too, too big for most people, so we make it smaller because like we listen to the customers in the end. And last thing we do is like send a like, last desperate voucher. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what we do afterwards is like uh, we go the extra mile. I think that's always very important. It's like change the channel. So if this is for us, it's like most, most of the time it's like uh, email marketing. I don't know what it is for you guys, but it's for us. And uh, we say, we send all these emails and nothing happens. So we say, we're gonna send a postcard. So basically we, we won our customers online. We also were like on TV, but we didn't win them offline. But we say, change the channel and go offline to reach them on a different part of their journey. And uh, then what we do is like create a 360 degree experience. So just the postcard alone. So we're sending this postcard out to like, let's say to like a German, non-buyers for four months. So the first day we're sending this out, 
people buy. And then it just goes down, like the first peak is a Sunday, people always buy on Sundays, <laughs> which I love that. So, but in the end it goes down. You see like it's day 11, it's like almost two weeks, it's probably gonna be around zero, like maybe like five to 10 sales per day. But then we start our, oh, sorry, we just our early like three channel approach. So we, we have in the postcard, we're sending like a reminder email and we also pushing the same message on Facebook. So we target the same people on Facebook. And what happens then is like, this is the first email, this is our first biggest sales day. We send the same email to non-openers. So you can basically you can track people who don't open your emails. You just send the same email and all of a sudden they open the email and they buy it. <laughs> and then we also send like a last reminder. We also have a last reminder campaign on Facebook running. And uh, I think our sales is like triple through that cross-channel approach in the end. And I think that's very important for everybody because usually you just like rely on one channel, but in the end it's like reach them on as many like touch points as you can. Like if you ca can call them, call them. Like you can't do that, but if you can call them, I think it would really work. Um, we also, we're also doing WhatsApp at the moment and that's also like amazing. Like people really react to it if you like change like the message in the channel and like the touch point. So it's like amazing. So in the last step, it's like what we did last year is like grow your brand. And we're constantly like asking ourselves, um, are we doing it right? So we're doing loads of A-B testing, basically everything. So we're A-B testing like the times we send, we A-B test like the people we send to, like the message we send to. And uh, so we brought, it's again in the room, we brought like two different uh, examples. So for instance, like Lena, like you deserve it. It's our like reactivation campaign. Last one is like, Lena, you deserve to look good. <laughs> And uh, the last email click opens like 25% times more. And this is like a tiny change. And it's also like about making people feel good, I think, because you say like, you deserve to look good. And people write back to that, which is also amazing. Like they write back like, oh, I know I deserve to look good and stuff. Like it's very funny. Like it's very funny. Like what kind of like conversations come out of this. And I love those like small things you can do. Also like what is that before with a girl in customer service? It's like the smallest things and changes so much also on the revenue side. That's what we do. And the last thing we do is like ask them to like be your ambassador, what I also said before. It's like, uh, so we actually have like a refer a friend scheme. So you like, you get 15 euros. If you um, refer a friend, your friend also get 15 euros. And uh, so by now, after like three and a half years, it's like 20% of our, all our traffic comes from friends and family who recommend us. Which is like, I mean, this is first of all, it's like cheap, like it doesn't cost us anything, except for the first person. It's like, if a friend recommends you something, you're so more likely to listen to it. It's like, in the end, like, you trust them because it's a person you trust. So this is like the best marketing channel you can have. And I think it's super important also for like small companies to like encourage like the friend, like refer a friend scheme because it's so important for everybody. So I mean, the end. <laughs> So um, see your brand growth through CRM and through email marketing. So um, CRM email marketing altogether is very cost efficient. So if you compare it to like um, TV, for example, if you compare it to Facebook, to performance, Google ads, it is crazy cheap, <laughs> like really. And I think um, also because you, you set all, all these automations I talked about, all these marketing campaigns you always run through every day, basically like you set them up once, so it's one time effort, and then it just goes through, which is amazing for your revenue in the end. Um, be smart about it. What I said before, like what is segmentation, like what people want or like where they want to go. Um, be smart about like how you segment them or like in what part of the life cycle they are. For example, with the vouchers, it doesn't make sense to somebody, send somebody a voucher who's going to order anyway in like a week. So be really, really smart about like where people lose interest or like when people should buy again. Like so just like crunch the numbers, crunch the data, look at your data in the end. Um, increase overall um, customer lifetime value, so smart reorder triggers. Our reorder triggers are again like the personal emails. We have some more upselling emails. And if you do it very really smart, people's like customer lifetime value goes like really high up. And this is like with email marketing, one of the most efficient ones also because our like average baskets are way higher than like through other channels because it is a direct form of marketing because they have the personal conversation with you going like when Stefan invites you, you trust him more than when like you get like a general like, I don't know, top seller email or something. This is, I think this is like super interesting for everybody as a startup. 
So, <laughs> your key takeaways. I think it was a really lot, really quick. It's going to be like uh, get to know the customers, like and let them know what distinguishes you, like what makes you different, like what I said about the first date thing, like talk about what day you want, talk about what you want, what you are, and then like get together, like personalize all your interactions, which is like the Stefan email, like for example, like the after sales email, or also like a packaging, like when you like put something personal on everybody's packaging, like their name, it's so strong and it doesn't doesn't really doesn't take much in the end. And uh, give your brand a face. Like, give you give the people like a feeling like they can talk to somebody. It gives me a feeling like it's not a big <laughs> company with like no faces, but somebody they can actually like relate to and be like, this is a company like I like in the end. And constantly analyze and reactivate and increase the customer lifetime value. Like, so constantly A/B test, constantly look at your data and constantly like see where is potential to increase customer lifetime value. Because I mean, in the end. We all know it's really expensive to get a new customer, but the longer you keep in, the better it is for you. So, thank you. Very interesting, thank you very much. Um, I have two questions. Um, how big is your CRM team? And um, the other question I have is, um, do you only send automated messages or do you also have like, I don't know, weekly or monthly or whatever kind of um, newsletters based on events or anything else? So um, our CM team, uh, it was a long time just uh, just me. It was my own head off. <laughs> so, uh, but now we're uh, two full time and we have two interns. So um, I think it really like depends on like how you like allocate your resources so i think now with the 12 countries that we're having we're really happy we're like basically four people and um, we're also sending weekly newsletters and uh, this is actually like one of our biggest i would say income in email marketing because you also like you can push new products so we basically use our newsletter channel for content for example we send loads of content to motivate people we also send um loads of product launch because you say like you're subscribing to our newsletter you see us every week we're sending every, every, every week, I think. Um, then we say, like, you get to be the first one who gets the news from us. So this is our strongest push for, like, new products, for example. Hi, uh, my name is Yegor. I work for Eatfit. So we also try to make people healthier. We're kind of in the same field. Uh, since you rely on email solely, I'm wondering if you ever had problems with IP domain reputation and how you tackle those, and additionally, whether you use an engagement score in campaigns or not to uh, personalize. We, we don't have a problem with that because we're using like, um, I know we're using an email marketing program like Optivo, which has a very really good like IP whitelisting. So we don't have a problem with that at all. So we basically, we outsource it through our email marketing software. Okay, so you're in the shared IP then? Uh, I think we actually have a dedicated IP. Okay. So you can like, it depends like, you can uh, you can have both I think, but we chose the dedicated one. So we're sure like we have a good reputation. Uh, we <laughs> used to have problems with like, um, you would just reflect a spam when we had like a shared one because you share with like random companies, for example. But since we have dedicated ones, you have worked a little bit on our like sender like list, uh, we'd like always wait. So. Yeah, cool. And do you use an engagement score? Like overall, do you crunch the numbers on the user data or not, not yet? Not yet. Okay. I'd yeah. be interested to talk a bit more. In more yeah, detail. that would be nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Richard. Thank you for your great talk. Very interesting. Um, you mentioned that you do not use a uh, huge CRM system like Salesforce or comparable systems, which I really like. But is there anything you would expect from such a system that you do not have now that you would have then if you had one? Uh, I think what we're missing is like the connection between our channels. So what I would love to have is like the connection between um, email marketing and the Facebook channels and everything. This is something I'm missing in our email marketing um, program at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I still think because we do most stuff online, that this would be smarter to have like a data warehouse, maybe connecting all those sources. So we don't know if the CRM system would be right for us at the moment. Hi, Matthew from Talentio. Thank you for your talk today. Uh, I thought it was really good. Um, what do you think is the worst trait or worst thing that somebody could do in an email marketing campaign from your experience? Um, I think like all these people just pushing sales every time. I think this is like seriously the worst email marketing you can do. Like 
if you look like I, I have like I think a thousand newsletters or something I feel like every day or like a lot and like every second one has a huge discount so I think in the end you're also like you're spoiling your customers and they won't buy without a voucher and also like it's not relevant for them because they can't buy every single week and I think this is like the worst you can do you just like solely rely on vouchers instead of like going for the content like, instead of saying like I'm good enough for you I'm such a good brand that it, you don't need to have a voucher to buy from me basically I think that's the worst thing you could do. And if people do reject your email or say like unsubscribe or not interested, what do you think is the appropriate way to deal with that? Um, well, I think it just it's a normal thing to, to happen. I think it depends on like how high your unsubscribe rate is. If you're at uh, I would say one two percent, you should really think about what you're doing wrong. Like maybe you're promising something wrong. Like maybe you're saying like you're gonna get amazing content and in the end you get nothing or like really bad looking emails. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Benjamin. Uh, thanks for the talk, it was very nice. Um, I was wondering whether you are also thinking about, uh, you said you are collecting all kinds of data as also from your website. Yeah. Um, you have an integration then between Analytics and Optivo, or how are you evaluating the data that you collect on the website? Connecting to, we, we do. <laughs> We do everything, we do loads of stuff manually at the moment, so we actually put them manually together in the end and see what happens. But at the moment we're like, uh, Footspring is like working on like building up their BI, the data rails which I talked about, like the over BI like setup. So I think that would be like the next step to have that all like automated. Mm. Uh, I work for WebTrack and... Uh, I think we're just talking to WebTrack at the moment. I actually ah. think we're in the WebTrack integration at the moment. Just ah, yeah, that's a very good choice then. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hope so. I just heard good things about WebTrack. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, one of the guys responsible uh, to consider uh, on how to make the web analytics stuff uh, work together with the CRM. So yeah. I guess we'll talk also with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the other step that uh, uh, we are looking at is uh, on how to use the web analytics data to personalize websites and yeah. not only do it on, on the email channel but also on the website and I was wondering whether you have any experience already with that but no. then you're probably looking into but it. But I right think what we, what we want to do is basically like to say like the website the website changes as soon as we know who's on the web like who's like mm -hmm. on the website so you can like have like parts that change so we know like you're a woman you want to lose weight so you cannot get like shape offers for example so this is like where we want to go to because I think what I said one to one conversation the more personalized the better so but this is where we're trying to get to. My name is Markus, and I'm also from Vectric, but I have an unrelated question. Uh, so uh, you are doing a lot of personalized messages, but I guess you send them automatically. How often do you think you can send the same type of personalized message without wearing off? So uh, at the moment, you have a very dynamic uh, situation where a lot of first-time customers, uh, I guess, appear. But then when you get the same type of order the third time and you get the same type of follow-up email the third yeah. time, probably you start wondering whether it wasn't maybe so personalized in the end. That is true. I think, um, so what we saw now, we have the email once, so we send it to non-buyers once. We send it uh, for the first buy. So only if somebody buys for the first time, we send a personalized email saying like, did you get your order? Are you happy with it? Um, what we're working on now is like to have special automations for people who bought like more than once, about like for example like three times. That we say like we're trying to say, wow, you're like a loyal customer. Like this is your reward basically. So this is where we're working on right now. So more loyalty-based CRM. Are you thinking about automatizing the whole cycle? Like the whole cycle can be infinite. So you might need an infinite number of messages. And are you thinking about automatizing that or are you more or less thinking one step by step? Because if you think just step by step and you grow quickly, let's say exponentially, this will get out of scale. It will not work anymore. I think we want to do like step by step. So say what we do now, like a three orders sending that message, for example, and so on. And uh, I think the next step will actually be like a loyalty kind of program, which is a big scale kind of thing. So I think we're going to talk about this maybe in half a year. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Viola. Thanks uh, for the talk. You mentioned that you um, that Stefan gets these personal emails. Uh, does he answer those responses as well? And if so, up to which degree? Like how often? Um, because that would also be a problem, I 
assume in, in scaling at a certain point. And then you, you talked a lot about what happens once uh, the, the, your customers are on your homepage and sign up. How do you, I would also be interested in knowing how do you get them to your homepage? Uh, and do you have any special channels you use for that? Yeah. So I think the first question, um, the second question, so basically using Zendesk. So every answer to our automated emails go directly into Zendesk as a ticket. So the customer service can, can solve it immediately. So for us, I think it takes around four to five hours if you're like on a lucky day. Um, what actually happened, I think last month was like we also started, like France is our second biggest market at the moment. We also started those Stefan emails in France, uh, which didn't work that well. Then we changed Stefan's name to Stefan Berger. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so many people wrote back that we had to stop that email for a while because customer service was not able to respond anymore. Which was like insane. So they had to, they had like 300 open tickets because of that email, for example. So uh, we really liked it. like because we say like consult, like consulting the users are one of our USPs. So if we see the degree of like people wanting to get answers through that, we actually hire more people. So this is what we did now for France as well. We just hired more people because we knew like there's a need, and this is what we what we want to be known for in the end. And um, the second question about the channels we're using. Uh, we are investing a lot in uh, performance marketing, so we loads of Facebook ads. I think our ch second biggest one is at the moment was TV. We had a huge TV campaign running in January, and February, March. That would be a huge um, one for us. Also, like the Google, the whole Google adverts part, that's also very important to us. So I think that's the biggest three channels. Hi, uh, my name is Nick. I'm from a company called Packable. It's a custom packaging startup. But uh, really cool talk. Uh, my two questions were: the first one was. Um, do your customer service reps or sales reps, are they paid um, or motivated at all by commission? Um, and the second question was, I was just curious how you balance the, the workflow and the workload between your intern, the two interns and then you and your colleague. Is it like um, them generating the content, you kind of like moderating it or them searching for the images or something like that? Uh, so, uh, like customer support, it's uh, it's not commission based. It's very like we actually have like trained nutritionists in customer service. So people answering those emails actually like they went to university studying nutrition for like three four years. So they're not commission based. It's like normal salary kind of thing. Um, yeah, and the, the upsell thing, which I said before, there was not planned for. Like we never said like try to sell them more. We said like try to help them as much as you can. Like say what they really need. And what just happens is that people just buy more. It was never, it was never the attention, for example. So I actually think that's a, just a great outcome. Uh, the second question with the, so I have like a CRM manager, basically full time, and the two interns. And um, we're trying to do as much as possible. That everybody can see as much as possible. So she basically does all the email marketing related things, and we're trying to push the data part, more example, or the net promoter score. Like this is basically what I do. Like try to put that more in perspective. Like the interns doing loads of. Um, News that are building, for example, also coming up with ideas, but they also do their own projects. For example, the last intern she does loads of focus groups, which also helps us. So I think we're trying to really like give our interns like valuable tasks to do. So this is how we do it. Cool. Thanks a lot, Lena. Okay. <laughs> It's really nice. Thanks. So, yeah. Round of applause again. Thank mm -hmm. you.